So you've been doing a great job at marketing your services and finally you get that notification that says that someone book a call with you. And now your heart starts racing and you are not really sure how to navigate this very important discovery call. Stick around and I'm going to show you step by step how to successfully navigate this discovery call. As a freelancer, virtual assistant, or any type of independent contractor, you are responsible for bringing your own clients. And part of this process, a very, very important part, is the discovery call. And it's very normal that people that are not so comfortable with the sales process, that sales doesn't come natural to them, they struggle a little bit with closing the sale, with navigating these discovery calls. But there is a way. No worries, I'm going to guide you step by step. But first, let's discuss what exactly is a discovery call. So the main goal of a discovery call is to establish rapport, understand the pain points of the potential client, and ultimately see if you are a good fit for each other. It's very important here that you understand that it's not just your client who is going to decide if they're going to hire your services. Actually, this is your opportunity to understand if you want to work with that client or not. So another important thing that you need to consider before jumping in this call is that this call is not about you. This call is about the client. So you will have to be very, very good at listening. Your clients only care about what solution you could potentially bring to them. What is the benefit they are going to get? And you need to be very smart to understand that in order to come across in a way that they can open their ears and get the information. Because if you have that me, me, me type of approach, it's not going to go really well. So let's talk about how to get ready before you jump to this goal. This is key. Getting ready is only going to increase your chances to get this client if you want to. Do your best in order to find out something about this business, something about this client prior to the call. When you find information, then it's going to be you know, easier to create a connection and your conversation is going to be more educated. And instead of wasting time on asking the basics, you might be able to ask better questions. Not just that, you're going to look way better. You're going to look like you are a professional. You're going to show that you came prepared, that you care about this meeting, and that you are super resourceful. So let's talk about how to set up this discovery call. So keep in mind, you could do it either by phone or by Zoom. Either way, it's perfectly fine. The way that I handle that is through Calendly. Calendly is an application where you can link your calendar and you can share your availability with your prospective client. Also, it's great that you can actually set a series of questions for your prospective client to fill out through Calendly before they confirm their appointment. And that is great in the cases that you need more specific information based on the type of services that you offer. Also, when someone actually booked through Calendly, you're going to receive a notification directly in your email letting you know that someone booked a call with you for a specific day and time. So now that you have this call booked, now it's time to discuss what happened during the call. So my first recommendation is to get ready. And that includes, as we mentioned before, doing some research and also understanding what is the information that you need to get from this call. What is the structure that you're going to follow and what are the couple of questions that you absolutely need to ask. It's not a bad idea to kind of practice if you don't feel ready, if you feel anxious or if you think that, you know, it's not something that is in your comfort zone or come naturally to you, practice. It's not a bad idea. 
My second recommendation is never, ever, ever use an script. And when I said use an script, I mean like an script in front of you when you're having that call and read line by line. People can tell when you're reading. So when you read an script, you're going to actually be paying attention to the script, to what comes next, when you're going to be able to ask your ne next question. Instead of participating of this conversation and paying attention to what your client is saying and actually following the flow of this conversation. I'm not saying don't have some bullet point you know, some reminders, some guidance that you can have in your computer in front of you on a piece of paper. That way you know that you're not going to forget to touch bases on these particular topics. That is totally different. So the main goal of this conversation, of this discovery call, is to understand the pain points that your potential client is experiencing, how these things are affecting them. And then once that you kind of create that connection, then you will be able to easily present a solution to these particular issues, not to sell whatever services you provide, because if not, you're going to be perceived as a commodity. But the important thing is to create a connection and to be able to make them understand what type of solution you can offer through your services. For example, if you're a bookkeeper, you don't need to tell them you offer to keep their books up to date and to reconcile their accounts. Instead, if you understand that they are spending so many hours doing their books themselves and doing them wrong, then your solution will be to give them their time back so they can do what they do best, which probably is running their business. Another example will be if you are a real estate transaction coordinator having a discovery call with a very busy real estate agent who fails to get paid at the closing table every single time because his files or her files are not compliant. In this case, you're not going to tell them that you offer to manage the transaction. You will offer a solution which is to have their compliance on point so they can be paid on time at the closing table every single time instead of waiting a week to receive a check from the broker on the mail. Now keep in mind that the goal in here is to listen, not to talk. It is amazing how much you can learn if you don't interrupt, if you let your clients tell you about their issues. And I promise you, that is going to make your discovery calls way easier because they're going to do all the talking. Now, the fact that they do the majority of the talking doesn't mean that they are in control of the call. You are. People love to talk about themselves. So let them talk, take notes, and while you're listening, pay a lot of attention to potential red flags. What are the red flags? One is that they might not be ready for your services. They might not be able to kind of afford your services. And second, you might already notice that this client might be difficult, demanding, and unrealistic. And obviously, you will have to evaluate what is acceptable for you and what is not. I wanted to make a distinction in here. Because in some cases, I hear people referring to discovery calls and free consultations as the same thing. And to me, they are completely different. When I hear free consultation, to me, it means that I'm going to get something for free, free advice, free coaching, free something. I'm going to run my issue, my challenge, through an expert and that expert is going to give me advice and you know maybe I decide to keep working with that expert in the future. But still, I will get my answer. Now, when I talk about discovery calls, that's not the case. You might showcase your expertise, giving them a tip or two here and there if you feel like, but that is not the goal of a discovery call. So now let's talk about the structure I use for my own discovery calls. 
So the first thing I do is to thank them for taking the time to book a call with me. And very briefly, I explain what's the goal of the discovery call. I let them know that I would love to know more about their business and to understand if we are a good fit to work together. It's also a good idea to break the ice with a small talk, maybe something you learn about their city or something you learn uh, about their business or whatever, right? But don't spend so much time on that. Just enough to break the ice. So after the opening, I start asking them about their businesses or their challenges or their goals. But the main idea here with this question is to learn what are their pain points. And after they tell me everything about their pain points and challenges, I'm going to ask a follow-up question inquiring about how much these issues, challenges are getting in the way for them to accomplish their goals, how much is that affecting their business growth or how much they are affecting their personal life. So I hope that you can see by now that they did the heavy lifting. They are the ones saying, I desperately need help. I have a problem that is really serious and I need a professional. So now, based on what I learned from them, I'm going to be able to offer a solution to fix that particular issue instead of offering a list of my services. If it's possible, again, it depends on the type of services you offer, I will give them a price and will try to close the sale. Because if they have any type of objections, I will be able to answer them right on the spot. If they're in agreement, I will go ahead and send them an agreement to sign by the end of the day. Now, in some cases, it depends on what services you offer. You might need to send a proposal instead. And you, instead of giving them an exact price, you might need to give them a price range. And that's perfectly fine. You will evaluate what step you are going to take first. So if you're going to send them a proposal, give them a time for them to expect that proposal in their inbox. And you should book another call to review the proposal. Now, I would like to talk about, you know, a few tips. First of all, it might be super obvious, but you might be surprised. Be on time. Another tip that I think that is very, very useful, especially at the very beginning, is to record the call. Obviously, ask them for permission. And if they agree, go ahead and record the call. That is going to be invaluable, especially if you are not that trained and familiar with this discovery call. That might be a great opportunity for you to re-watch this call and learn from what happened in this call. Identify ways to improve yourself for the next one. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I am not a salesperson. I really don't enjoy the hard sales, but at the same time, um, we need to recognize that we are doing business in here. I don't want to be super aggressive, but I come with intention. And my intention is to convert the client. Now, at the same time, I am very aware that not every client is going to be a good fit. And I'm also very intentional on looking for potential issues, for red flags, as we mentioned before. And if I think that a client is not going to be a good fit, I just don't take it. So if you think that you're not going to be able to help this client for whatever reason, just let them know. Be super honest, straightforward, be nice about it, and whenever possible, maybe point them to the right direction. Recommend them another service provider that might be able to help them better. Please let me know in the comments if you find this information helpful and what are the tactics you use, what are your best practices when it comes to discovery calls. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.